Now that we've examined graphing linear equations in a variety of forms and procedures, the next thing that we want to look at is look at the different forms of equations and what we can do with them all by themselves. So the first section that we're going to look at is slope-intercept form. This comes from section 3.4. In order to do this, you do need to know the formula and the pieces associated with slope-intercept form. You also need to know how to solve for an indicated variable. Upon completing this presentation, you will be able to translate an equation for general form to slope-intercept form. You will be able to identify the slope and the y-intercept of an equation. So the first thing is, let's review what, different, what forms we know of for linear equations at this time. The first form that we have is general form. General form is where all of our variables are on one side and our constants are on the other. It is generally written ax plus by equals c, where a, b, and c are numbers. The second form that we have looked at is slope-intercept form, which is y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. So, in this section, what we're going to do is start with general form, the ax plus by equals c. We want to rewrite it in slope-intercept form. In order to do this, our basic procedure is solve for y. To solve for y, we want to move the x term to the other side of the equation, and we want to divide by the coefficient. Note. In this section, we do want to go ahead and divide each term by the coefficient and simplify if possible. We're not going to just slap it over one number because we are going to need to be able to identify the pieces. So we're going to be using the distributive property in order to divide each term on one side by the coefficient. From there, we want to identify the slope. The slope is the coefficient of the x term. We want to identify the y-intercept in point form. The y-coordinate of the y-intercept is the constant term. If you have it in slope-intercept form, the y-intercept in point form is going to be 0, comma, b. So let's go ahead and now look at some examples and see what we're going to do. Okay, so if we go ahead and look at some examples here, let's look at example A. For example A, in order to write this in slope-intercept form, we want to go ahead and solve for y. So my first step to solve for y is I need to move any non-y terms to the other side of the equation, which means that I need to move my 2x. In order to get rid of 2x, I want to subtract 2x. So we will subtract 2x on the left, and remember, whatever we do to the left, we do to the right. So on the left, my 2x's cancel, and I am left with negative 3y. On the right, I am left with negative 2x minus 12. Remember that the goal is to write this in y equals mx plus b form. That's the reason that I am putting my 2x term first, my negative 2x term first, is so that it matches what we have over here. All right, from there, in order to solve for y, I want to divide by negative 3. Since we have negative 3 times y, the opposite of multiplying by negative 3 is dividing by negative 3. Now, in the past, what we did was we just slapped the whole thing on the right over negative 3. But since we want it is as separate terms over here, 
I want to divide each term by negative 3. Basically what we're doing is we are distributing the division of negative 3. So on the left we have my negative 3's cancel and on the right we want to go ahead and simplify each one of these terms. For the first term, my negatives cancel, so I am left with 2 thirds x. And on the second term, we get negative 12 divided by negative 3 is positive 4. So from here, we want to go ahead and identify what is the slope. Our slope is the number in front of the x, it is the 2 thirds. And our y-intercept in point form, remember that the 4 is the y-coordinate, and in order to be a y-intercept, x has to be 0. And so these are the three things that I will be looking for on quizzes and exams. I will be looking for the equation, and I will be looking for the slope and the y-intercept in point form. Okay, so let's go down to example B. Example B, again, we want to go ahead and solve for y. So my first step is to get rid of any terms that don't have y. I want to get rid of 5x. In order to move 5x to the other side of the equation, I want to subtract 5x. So I get minus 5x and minus 5x. On the left, my 5x's cancel, leaving me with 7y. And on the right side, I get negative 5x plus 12. Again, remember that in order to better identify slope-intercept form, we want our x term first and our constant term second. My last step in order to solve for y is I need to get rid of the 7. Since this is 7 times y, I want to divide by 7. And again, I want to do this to every term in my equation. So on the left, my 7's cancel, leaving me with just y. And on the right, none of these cancel, so we're just going to leave it as negative 5 sevenths x plus 12 over 7. Now, if you're sitting there wondering, well, that doesn't look good. I mean, the y-intercept isn't even a whole number. It's okay. We're not graphing it. We're just manipulating equations. So we're going to do exactly what we did on example A. My slope is negative 5 sevenths. And my y-intercept in point form, again, my y is 12 over 7, and in order to be a y-intercept, we have x is equal to 0. And so that takes care of that problem. Now, even though we can't exactly graph this very precisely using slope and y-intercept, um, it does tell me what my graph, I could draw a sketch of the graph. The slope since it is negative, I know that my line is going to go down from left to right. My y-intercept, even though I can't plot it precisely, I can go ahead and note that it is above the y-axis. So in my head, I do have a visualization of what this looks like, regardless of whether I can graph it precisely using this information. So hopefully that makes a little bit more sense. Again, this is an example of where we do use that solving for an indicated variable. So when will we see this again? If graphing lines using slope and y-intercept was a method that you preferred, 
Then to use that method, you must start by writing equations in slope-intercept form. Slope-intercept form is always preferred, is always the preferred form for linear equations, as it allows us to sketch the graph without doing any computations. Later in this module, we will talk about manipulating point-slope form, and we will always want to write our answer in slope-intercept form. Once you feel confident with the examples here, go ahead and try the following problems on your own and bring your answers to class. As part of your notes, please answer the following questions and bring your answers to class along with any other questions that you have. How confident are you with the material presented? What from this section needs to be explained further? And how much more practice do you need to be comfortable with the topic?